On Thursday, the 23rd of June, the people of the UK will vote either to remain in the EU or to leave. Today we have the Right Honourable Michael Gove, Justice Secretary, uh, who is going to be answering some questions about the campaign. So, Michael, welcome to the Akal Channel. Thank you. How's the campaign been going so far? It's been fantastic. There's been a really encouraging response. I was just walking through the streets of Birmingham mm. earlier, um, and there were a number of guys who were mm. coming up and wishing us well. Mm. And I do get the sense that the British people at last feel that they have an opportunity to take control of their own destiny. Mm. And on June the 23rd, I, I think they will vote to leave, and I think that as a result, Britain will be better off. Okay, I'm going to ask you a few specific questions about different policy areas, but just first of all, why are you going against your own government and campaigning to vote to leave? In, in a sense, you're breaking ranks. Well, it's a very personal thing for me. Um, mm -hmm. I grew up in Aberdeen. My dad had a small business. He was a fisherman. <coughs> and when I was uh, a young boy, that business went to the wall. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons it did so was because of the way in which the EU's common fisheries policy worked. Mm -hmm. Essentially, something that Britain had had um, uh, a uh, control over, our fish mm. docks, it was handed over to the EU. As a result, he lost his business and the people he employed lost their jobs. And ever since then, I've seen the European Union, uh, with its regulation and with its interference and with its bureaucracy, being bad for business, particularly small businesses, and also bad for our democracy. So mm. when the chance came in this referendum, I thought that I had to be true to my background and to my beliefs and argue for us. So how long have you kind of believed in that? Has it been recent? I've oh. always been very sceptical about the okay, European Union. But Boris Union. Johnson has been on record as one of you actually saying that he thought it was a good idea and he's only recently changed his mind. I think that Boris, like a lot of us, um, wanted the European Union to work because we can understand okay. why it's a good thing for countries to cooperate together. But I think Boris, like me as well, um, has seen the European Union close up and recognises that okay. it's not going to change for the better. Yeah. I know that you, Boris and Priti Patel, have made a major announcement this morning uh, around um, immigration policy and that you're wanting to introduce a point system. Is that an alternative? Because some of the media is reporting this is an alternative election manifesto that actually it's not really about leave or stay, but it's about the future of the Tory party. No, it's about the future of the country. And people often ask us, what would life be like if we left the European Union? And this is a concrete way of explaining that we would end the discrimination that we currently have in our migration system. At the moment, if you're an EU citizen, you can come here, even if you don't have a job, um, whereas you can be a highly skilled person coming from uh, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, um, and you can't come here even if you do have all of those skills because EU uh, citizens are at the front of the queue and Commonwealth citizens are at the back. Mm. I think you probably know that the Sikhs and uh, the South Asian community generally are very kind of uh, business minded. Uh, there are lots of small businesses um, and large businesses as well and many of them will be watching the channel today. And they'll be worried because all of the economic forecasts that we've seen from, you know, from all the major kind of um, uh, organisations are resulting that this will result in the shrinking of the economy. So what would you say to those people? Well, one of my closest friends in, in Surrey is a guy called Moonpal Singh Grawal, and uh, <coughs> he's a highly successful um, mm. entrepreneur. Uh, he's backing leave, as many entrepreneurs are, because they recognise that the EU tends to be bad for business. Now, it may be good for some of the very big firms that can rig the rules in their favour, but for small and medium-sized businesses, and for entrepreneurs, I'm afraid the EU rules mean that it's, it's more difficult for companies to grow, to hire new workers, and to pay them the wages that they deserve. But the PwC, the PricewaterhouseCoopers uh, uh, report for the CBI, actually gave us some very shocking figures. A £100 billion cost, uh, £1 million jobs being lost, £3,700 being lost from average household incomes. How, how can you respond to these dramatic kind of figures. Well, the CBI was an organisation that said that we should join the single currency. And at the time, there were a number of us who thought that that was a bad idea. The CBI said if we didn't join the single currency then, that our economy would be ruined. And they used the same type of rhetoric and the same type of figures then. Uh, they were wrong then, and I fear they're wrong but now. But is, isn't it the case that the, the Brexit campaign has lost all the arguments on the economics, on the statistics, and now you're simply now going towards emotion and, and more of nationalistic tendencies? I don't think so. I think if you look at the economic case, even acknowledged by in-campaigners, there are very strong economic arguments for us leaving. Well, quote, quote me one statistic that says that it will be a positive for well, leaving. Uh, we spend, or rather we send, to the European Union every week £350 million. Pounds. Now, we get some of that money back, hmm. but we could control it all if we left the European Union. It's also the case that if we left the European Union, wages for working people would rise. The, the guy who's leading the in campaign, Stuart Rose, has said that wages would go up if he left the EU. Mm. 
And there was an announcement about VAT as something um, we'll, we, we will have to pay for fuel. And yes, like it, that. at the moment, if we're in the EU, once VAT has been slapped on a product, you mm. can't remove it. If we left the European Union, then we could remove uh, VAT on domestic fuel, and that could save households £60 a week. But, oh, sorry, £60 a year, sorry. But then how would you make up for the shortfall? I mean, wouldn't it just be robbing Peter to pay Paul? Well, we could make up for the shortfall because we'd have, at the very least, £10 billion back that we currently give to the EU every year. Mm. Another report that's just come out, which is from the TUC, reporting that uh, leaving the EU will be a disaster for British workers. I think they've said £38 a week worse off by 2030. What can you say to the kind of ordinary working people? Well, working people will be better off if we're outside the European Union. It's not just the case that wages will rise mm -hmm. as a result of controlling migration. It's also the case so that... So the TUC is wrong then? I think in this case, yes. And there are a number of trade unions, uh, uh, like the RMT, that are very clear that actually workers would be better off outside mm. the EU. And there are a number of Labour politicians, including Gisela Stewart, mm -hmm. um, who've argued very powerfully that we would be better off if we were uh, working people would be in a stronger mm -hmm. position. And in particular, I think that uh, access to public services would be easier uh, at the moment because of the, the way in which people can come from the EU to, to mm -hmm. use the NHS and to... Uh, yeah, use our education system and to get on the housing ladder, yeah. it's more difficult for our young people to mm. get into smaller class sizes and to get the homes they need. Yeah. I mean, in, in a uh, historical phase of globalisation of trading blocks around the world, I mean, the EU, EU was built as a, a single trading block and the, 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 the most powerful in the world. You know, what is the logic now at, at such an unstable moment in, in world history of leaving and actually creating more instability? I think by leaving, actually, we would be in a stronger position to forge new trading relationships, whether with uh, India, China or the United States of America. One of the problems with the EU is that it's no longer just a free trade area. It's now mm. a, a bureaucratic monster mm. that means that uh, uh, new rules are piled on businesses that prevent them uh, trading <coughs> and growing. And also, if we're trying to negotiate a new trade deal, any one of the 28 countries can veto it if that particular country thinks that they're at a disadvantage. If we leave, then we can do as, for example, Little Iceland has done. It's just got a population the size of Croydon, yeah. but it's got a trade deal with China. We don't. But isn't this part of the kind of poverty of, of your argument that you have to quote Little Iceland? I mean, Great Britain now has become Little Iceland. My point is that uh, if Little Iceland can negotiate a trade deal with China, then Great Britain has absolutely nothing to fear. Mm -hmm. We're the fifth largest economy in the world. We've got the, the world's favourite language. We have uh, the greatest soft power and influence of any country in the globe. Those people who say that we can't survive and prosper outside are basically saying that you and I are incapable of shaping our own destiny. And I think that's wrong. So those people who are saying that, you know, moving away from a cosmopolitan European ideal to a kind of little Englander mentality, that's not right then? I don't think Priti Patel is a little Englander. <laughs> I don't think Rishi Sunak is a little Englander or Suella Fernandez. Yeah. They're three Conservative MPs who yeah. are backing leave. I don't think that uh, uh, people like Simon Wolfson, who run uh, Next, or uh, Anthony Bamford, who export across the world mm. through JCB, are little Englanders. Okay. Actually, our vision is non-discriminatory and non-racist. We're saying that people from whatever background mm. should be able to come here on equal terms and Britain should be able to trade with every country mm. in the world on equal mm. terms. Now, if you get your way and you get a Brexit, you get an exit, then that might precipitate actually the breakup of the UK. Oh, so no, wouldn't no. you be responsible for you know, undoing the very thing that you wanted to preserve? I think that leaving the uh, European Union could only strengthen the United Kingdom. Um, there's no appetite in Scotland for a, uh, a second independence vote. Mm. Um, and all the polls suggest that if, if there were such a vote, people would vote overwhelmingly to remain in the United Kingdom. Um, if Scotland separated from the United Kingdom, mm. Scotland would have to accept the euro as its mm -hmm. currency. Uh, so I don't think there's any chance at all. I actually think that voting for us to, to leave would be a vote of confidence in the United Kingdom mm -hmm. and in its capacity to lead in the world. And I think that that would uh, lead to a stronger sense of common Britishness for people, whatever their background. OK, we're talking about unity. What about the Conservative Party? It looks like the gloves are off now and that there's, it's a slugging match now between Cameron and, and you, yourself and Priti Patel and, and Boris. I mean, can the Conservative Party survive a bloodbath, which is, which is what it's going to be? Well, what's most important is not the fate of the party, but the fate of our country. And that's why this referendum is separate from the general election. So you don't deny that there will be a bloodbath? I absolutely do deny, <laughs> because I think that the first thing is the general election decides who our government is. And we've got a government that's been uh, elected at the last general election and will be in place for the next uh, four years. The referendum is a separate decision. If we vote to leave, that's an instruction that the country is sending to the Prime Minister and to the government 
to take us out. And it's an instruction that the Prime Minister and the government will follow. I don't think there's any chance of um, uh, the, the sort of scenario that you outline because uh, the uh, shared common purpose that brought us into government to improve education, to improve our prison system, to improve the NHS, that binds us together. So can you say then, with all honesty, you know, after the 25th of June, whatever the outcome, it will be all hugs and uh, friendly Conservative Party again? Uh, conviviality. Absolutely. Yeah, completely. OK, Mike, thanks very much for your very forthright and honest answers. Just one last thing. The Akal Channel is here to serve the community. It's a charity channel. Would you like to give a message to the Akal Channel viewers uh, directly to the camera? Yes. Uh, one of the great things about the United Kingdom is that we benefit so much from having so many different people from so many different backgrounds enriching our culture. And of course, uh, as you might have heard earlier in this interview, there's a special place in my heart for people from the Sikh community. One of my closest political and personal friends, uh, Moonpal Singh Rawal, has been my greatest source of advice and counsel throughout my political career. So the Akal Channel helps ensure that people across the world, in the UK, uh, back in India and elsewhere, have the chance to exchange ideas, information, um, and stay friends as part of a global community. So everything that uh, people at home can do to support the channel, uh, I'd like to support as well. The Right Honourable Michael Gov, MP and Secretary of State for Justice, thank you very much. Wahi Guruji ka khalsa, Wahi Guruji ki fateh.